Hello and welcome back to Photo Walkthrough. Today we're going to be taking a look at the image you can see here on the screen. This is this is the final edited version. And uh, this is a photograph that was taken when Ruth and I visited some friends of ours and the kids were playing in the garden. And as you can see, uh, this little girl here is playing in uh, what looks like a, a sort of a paddling pool type thing. A very blue paddling pool and that's going to be a big part of uh, the editing that goes on in this particular picture. Um, so let's uh, start off by making a virtual copy of this file uh, and that's going to give us a new copy to work on uh, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to right click on the image here in the time in the uh, film strip and I'm going to choose create virtual copy now the wonderful thing about Lightroom as we know is that it doesn't edit the uh, raw files it leaves the raw files alone on disk um, and the way it actually stores the edits is that it stores them as a list of things that you did in the database so your master as it were is the raw file on the disk plus the edits that are stored in the database now because those edits are stored in the database separately from the raw file, when we create a virtual copy like this, all we need to do um, is make a separate list of edits. We don't need to make a copy of the raw file. That means that when we have two of these images, so we've now got two here side by side in the film strip, um, these are both pointing at the same raw file, um, but with a separate list of edits. So if I click on the first uh, raw file here, on the first version of this, we can see that all of the history that went with it, all the edits I did when I first edited this picture are there in the history. Um, and we've also got a snapshot of the final version and the import version. Uh, if I click on my virtual copy, the history isn't there, but those snapshots are. So each of these entries in the database for this one raw file has its own space for, for snapshots and history and all the rest, but it's all pointing at the same raw file, and that means it takes up much, much, much less disk space, um, and it's much easier to back up the, uh, the catalog as a whole um, and the raw files with it, and you do a nice backup that way of the entire project, and you've got everything you need with it all stored together in, the, in, the, uh, in that one folder when you back it up. So um, it's a very useful feature to be able to do virtual copies um, and the reason I use it is uh, usually um, to do multiple different processings of the same image and occasionally I want to be able to see them side by side so it's useful to do a virtual copy um, so that you can do that. So we're going to work on this virtual copy we've created here and we'll, we'll start with the imported version of the file. So I've just gone to the import snapshot and that, uh, that import snapshot is created automatically whenever you import a photo into Lightroom. Um, the final snapshot is one I've created myself once I've finished editing it, uh, but the import should always be there whenever you've imported a file. So the first thing I'm going to do on this image is a little bit of straightening and cropping just to uh, sort out this sort of downhill slope that we've got here. It just feels a little bit uh, like we're going to slide from the left to the right. So I'm going to choose the crop tool, which is this tool here on the right, or you can get to it by pressing the R key on your keyboard. And I'm going to choose, in this case, I think this works for, as a, um, a square crop. So in the aspect ratio here, I'm going to choose one by one. Uh, now, if, you, if you've got a different aspect ratio in mind, or if you like to choose um, the crops yourself and, and make them exactly how you want them, remember you can unlock this little padlock here on the right-hand side. And if you unlock that padlock, it lets the crop uh, be any ratio you like. You can drag it to any size. So if you decided that you wanted exactly a crop like this, which is a little bit wider than it is tall, um, you could do that with the, with the, with the, um, the freeform crop tool like that. Um, or um, you can uh, um, click on the little cropping tool here. Whenever you pick these tools up, they sort of vanish off the dot and stick to your cursor. And with that, you can then draw your own crop on the screen. Um, but uh, personally, I prefer to keep the aspect ratio crop turned on, and I prefer to choose one of the standard crop ratios, one by one in this case, or the other standards are two by three and four by five. And those, I like to use those as much as I can because when it comes to actually sticking these prints on your wall or framing them in some sort of, uh, if you're going to put them in a book or something like that, or if you're going to print them as four by six to give the family, then it's useful to have them as a standard ratio so that they fit nicely into either a store-bought frame or into you know an album or something like that so uh, it just makes your life a little bit easier when it comes to actually giving people prints of these images if you stick to the standard ratios so in this case i'm going to go by go with one by one and i'm going to just talk briefly about how i'm going to how i'm going to compose this uh, first of all let's level it i'm going to just move my cursor outside of the crop area and you can see we get this little sort of turny cursor with the arrows pointing in different directions if i click and drag that lets us rotate the image 
and we can see that we've got little lines for, for, for lining it up here and getting it about right. Now I, I don't want to have the, uh, the edge of the, the um, paddling ball exactly level because I, I know from having done this before that that looks a little bit strange. Um, so I'm going to just do almost level and then let go there and that should be pretty good. Um, now the other thing that I'm going to do for composing this I'm going to put uh, the little girl's face approximately on a, a rule of thirds line. I do I do like rule of thirds compositions. It's a, certainly an excellent place to start when it comes to composing an image. I don't think we need quite as much space above our head as we had, so I'll drag that down. Um, but one of the other things I do feel is necessary in this image is to have a little bit of room just to the right hand side of this edge of the paddling pool. Um, it feels to me like if I was to move that there and let the edge go outside of the crop, um, it feels to me like it flattens the image. I think as a viewer you do instinctively sort of travel through the image. Whether you realise it or not, you're trying to get a sense of how objects are placed uh, in in re you know in relation to each other. The sort of the 3D uh, lay of the land, as it were. And if you if you block access to the background by having something that completely cuts you off and doesn't let you get past it, um, then you can't travel around. In your mind's eye, you can't sort of get a sense of of where this uh, paddling pool is in relation to uh, the, the lawn that it's on and the background that's there as well. If you just give it a little bit of space to the right there, then then in your mind's eye you can make that journey around and you can sort of see the, see the space. And it just gives it, to, it, it seems to me like it gives the shot a little bit more depth. So, um, so that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this just uh, come into the picture with a little bit of space on the right hand side just leaving that little bit of gap there uh, the little girl's face is nicely on a rule of thirds line and I think that's that's a pretty good starting point for a crop so I'm going to lock that crop in by pressing the return key on the keyboard This video is an extract from an episode of Photo Walkthrough, an online TV show all about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. If you'd like to see more, head on over to photowalkthrough.com where you can find all the old shows and subscribe to the new ones for free.